What's up guys, it's Josh from Soul Studios and I'm back with a new video that's furthering my journey on finding an interface that can accommodate all the channels I need with the more outboard gear that I get but also keeping the noise down because as I've discussed in some other videos the Avid interfaces if you've tried them you know they're awesome because they are going to guarantee you having sample accurate delay compensation when you're working in Pro Tools and when you use some other interfaces like the Antelope Galaxy 64 when we went down that rabbit hole in that video we quickly discovered that it was hit or miss and unfortunately if you're going to mix hybrid and you're going to have quite a bit of outboard that's simply not going to work for you you can't have your parallel drum aux sometimes bringing up the punchiness when you bring up your your drum auxiliary channel and then sometimes making it all kinds of comb filtering and phasing so anyway that's why i have two of these avid interfaces but as i've discussed before they can get really loud and especially with having them right here by my left ear i've grown pretty tired of it to be honest with you so i started digging around seeing if it would be possible to replace the fans. It turns out there are some newer options for fans that will work with these Avid interfaces, but have a much quieter self noise level while they're running. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to replace the fans, show you step by step. If you're someone like me that maybe this isn't something you're used to doing, I hope you learn along the way and I hope you can make a positive change to your interfaces to make them work a lot better for you like I've been able to do with these. All right, here we go. Let's get out the tools. Let's head into the, the kitchen table and let's get some new fans in these Avid HDIOs. So step one is figuring out which fan works in an Avid HDIO. And I've already got that part figured out for you. It's a Noctua NF-A8 and there is a link in the description for you to go ahead and get one of those. The only other thing I think will be helpful is this set of picks, or if you already have picks on hand, those are very handy in getting the connectors off of the new fan and the old fan. So of course, the first thing is disconnect your power cable and put it aside. You definitely don't want to work on any electronics with the power still running to the unit. So after you've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and take all of these top screws off. There's quite a few here, so I've sped up the video so it won't get too boring. But go ahead and remove all those and you can take your top lid off. So remove your lid and what you're going to notice is there's an inner lid on the left hand side. And there are a couple of screws on the side here that you'll need to remove first. And we do have to remove this inner lid to get to the old fan and to all the area that we need to install the new fan. So after these two screws are removed, we're going to spin it around here and you're going to see a couple of nuts on the other side of that silver panel. And I found a set of needle nose pliers to work well here. You just got to get them started and then you can pretty much uh, loosen them the rest of the way by hand. Now you can go ahead and remove that inner lid and keep in mind it's there for a reason. So be careful. Uh, there are certain things in pieces of gear that can still hold a charge even with the power disconnected. So be careful. Don't go poking around anywhere that you don't need to. On the front left of the unit, you're going to see this. That's the fan connector. And I want to show you here how the wires run behind this panel here and go over to the fan. So. That is the old fan that we're going to remove. So first things first, you have to disconnect that connector. It's not really a big deal. It's just a little clip that holds it in place. Once you do that, I think it's a great time to take your phone out and snap a picture so that you remember where the red and the black wires go. 
because as you can see on the new fan, we have four wires. Our colors are different. The little clip is off-centered, so that's not going to work. So what we're going to do is use our picks to take the connectors off and put the old connector onto the new fan. Now try not to be too aggressive with the pick here. You really just want to push these tabs down enough for them to clear that plastic housing. So you need to pull on the wires a bit as you're uh, pushing down. I'm not the best at this, honestly. I've got to thank my buddy John Hudson for walking me through this or I would have never figured it out. We're going to jump ahead just a little bit here because it took me a while to get those connectors off. But once you have the connectors off of your old fan and your new fan, you're going to take the new fan wires and you're going to put the yellow to where the red was and the black to where the black was. And as you can see from the picture, the first slot on the far left is where your yellow wire will go and the third slot is where your black wire will go. Once again, just be easy here. You don't need to overdo it, but once you slide these wires in, those little tabs will lock in place. And then just use some electrical tape on the two unused wires. There are four screws here, and that's the last thing holding the old fan in. So just remove those, and then you can completely remove the old fan and make room for the new one. Now, once your new fan is installed, before you put everything back together, you want to be careful here, but go ahead and turn your power on. And the reason being, you want to use your hand here to make sure that you feel air blowing out because you don't want it to be backwards, blowing the hot air back inside the unit. So again, just being careful. Don't touch anything here because you've got it plugged up, but just make sure that one, the fan works, and two, that it's blowing the air out. Let's take a second to listen to how quiet this is. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. If you have been wanting to lower the fan noise on your Avid interfaces, I think this does the job, and hopefully you were able to follow along and find a good, safe way for you to update your interfaces as well. And it's great that it's not a very expensive mod, especially if you do it yourself. Thanks for coming along on the journey. We will continue to find out the most affordable ways to integrate hardware into our studios for those of you that are watching that enjoy mixing hybrid as well. Appreciate you being here. If you happen to take on this mod, please let me know in the comments if you were able to update your interfaces. I hope it worked out for you. Again, be safe. If you're going to attempt this, please be careful. Please know what you're doing, at least to the extent that I've presented in this video. I hope it works out well for you and keeps your Avid interfaces running cool, but more importantly, quiet for the rest of the time that you use them. All right, guys, before you go, please like this video, subscribe, ring the bell, and you'll be the first to know when the next video comes out. Thanks. See you next time.